The Justice League may have died, or they may have turned into weapons, but it is time for the sidekicks and the children of our heroes to stand up against the greatest evil in Dark Crisis. This is Comic Storian. I catch you up on comics as audio dramas, and today we'll be covering Dark Crisis issue number four. For everything else in this epic event within DC comic books, click the link in the playlist down below, or click the link to purchase it yourself. In our last video, the world continued to spiral into chaos as Pariah's Dark Army gained more and more power using the dead superheroes as tools to create a new multiverse. Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, and Joe Mullen went to confront Pariah, but Hal began to learn the truth of Pariah's plans, and he got sucked into the world of Jon Stewart. Elsewhere, Black Adam took it upon himself to seek out new allies, determining that the younger heroes didn't have what it took to stop the coming evil. But he found himself at the doorstep of the Legion of Doom. As the city of Emerald shines bright around him, Hal Jordan finds himself in chains as the Kyle Rayner of this world accuses him of being one of the Lantern's greatest foes, Parallax. Hal sighs, asking if he really had to bring up that. He can already tell this whole world is nothing more than a giant construct. After attacking Hal, one of the lanterns holds out a gun, telling Hal that he is very brave to face the darkness without his ring, when suddenly another voice says that Hal might be brave and bold. Just then, the familiar sound of a crack of lightning and red blur rocket past, stunning the lanterns as Barry skids to a stop, telling Hal, you know, that jacket of yours really makes you stick out like a sore thumb in any world. Hal asks if it's really him. He thought that, but Barry tells him that Wally found him. Ha! I knew that kid had it in him. But, uh, did you know that this world is fake? And Barry tells him, yeah, he knows. He knows about Pariah, but he doesn't know why Pariah needed to make these construct worlds for everyone. Whatever it is, he's using the Justice League to power something explosive. There's someone that could possibly help them investigate Pariah's plans, but that would mean traveling to their world. But while Hal and Barry begin their journey back on Earth, the current heroes are doing what they can to fill the shoes of their predecessors, and for some, their fathers. However, one member of the Bat family hasn't moved and hardly eaten, and he refuses to leave the best side of his best friend. Nightwing sits alone next to Beast Boy's bed, with Alan Scott telling Mr. Terrific and Dr. Midnight that Beast Boy was struggling to recover, but feeling sorry for himself isn't going to help. Nightwing says that Beast Boy believes he was killed. That's why he's not waking up. The trauma of Deathstroke's attack was too much. One of his best friends thought he was dying, and I failed him. Alan tells Nightwing that once he saw the Flying Graysons perform, back before he was born, and they were amazing, fearless. But when they performed, they had everyone's eyes on them, just like he does now. Nightwing sulks. I can do it. Use that ring to lead us out of darkness, create a new Justice League, or use the society or whatever. Alan tells him that they don't need a fancy title or a team name. They don't need them to be heroes. There are a lot of people out there still wanting to be a hero. They need someone to carry on the legacy of those that have fallen. Nightwing tells him that Deathstroke beat them. His goal was to break their spirits, to toy with the Titans with him. It's going to take a lot more than some smiles and optimism to beat him this time. Alan says that he doesn't think that this is just Slade holding a grudge. There's something darker at work. Something is controlling Slade Wilson. But back over with Black Adam, he is now standing before the Legion of Doom, explaining his view on the situation and the need for them to permanently remove Deathstroke before he has a chance to attack again. Lex says that Deathstroke is a concern, but in our time with the totality, we observed the multiverse's truths and some lies. The idea of the Omniverse was false. It created an imbalance in our multiverse, which I believe Pariah is manipulating. We need to. Grodden shouts, We should do nothing! Allow Slade to finish his mission, kill all the heroes, and then the brutal battle between the sides will determine a winner. Then we will swoop in and destroy the victors when they are weakened. Just then, there's an explosion destroying the hall as Grodd begins to lift himself up and a heavy boot steps on his head, stomping him into the ground. Deathstroke leads his army in asking, Do you really think that I didn't foresee this alliance? The darkness knows all. So instead of conspiring to die against me, do the smart thing and join me. Let's burn it all down together, huh? Black Adam looks at Deathstroke, telling him that those chains that he wears, the Dark Army had them as well. And Captain Cold shouts, Screw that! The rogues don't join anything! As the battle begins elsewhere, in a very industrial Gotham, 
Barry skids to a stomp, and Hal gets down asking if this is Gotham. Batman's world? Of course he'd create a world like this. Barry tells him that the Bruce here is a little... different. He found him first. He tried to talk to him, and... But at that moment, there's a ting. As a gear is thrown into the ground, Batman appears telling them that they are interfering with his investigation. And Barry begins to run around, stating, Here we go again! Again? What do you mean again? Meanwhile, back at the battle, both sides are on equal footing, but off to the side, Lex is monitoring the world and finds that there is a spike in dark energy and that their foes are pulling power from an outside source. And that darkness is at the edge of the multiverse and is connected directly to Deathstroke, making him the key. Lex launches himself directly at Deathstroke and Deathstroke says, Aren't you supposed to be smart? How can you not see that you're on the wrong side here? Lex punches him with only one eye. I lacked vision. You're just a soldier, a hired gun. It's not really you pulling the trigger, is it? I know what happened to you, your children, the Lazarus Pits. People talk. Anyone can see that you're being controlled. You yourself has been through it before, had your humanity stripped away by a greater power. Trust me when I say that you will not get what you want, and I promise to help you. As Deathstroke sits defeated, Lex lifts his hand to deliver a fatal blast but suddenly he's attacked from behind by the darkness. The darkness has spread to all of the others, and as Black Adam is watching, he yells out, No! Not again! And watching from afar is Pariah. He watches the ever-growing darkness, stating that in the beginning, there was only one. A single black infant dude. So cold and dark for so very long that even the burning light was imperceptible. But the light grew and the infitude shuddered. And in that instant, a new multiverse was born. And that brings us to the conclusion of Dark Crisis, issue number four. Now, like I said in the beginning, if you want to know everything that's going on, we have all the current crossover stuff and all of the individual issues covered in a playlist. You can go check that out. This is the big event happening over at DC, and it has officially been renamed to Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, linking it back to earlier events. If you want to know the next part, make sure you check back here every Thursday. If something has come out, we're going to cover it. You can also like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when they come out. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, and I'll see you next time right here.